My Lords, we now come to the third oral question in the name of Barnes Nye. I understand that Baroness Crawley intends to ask this question on Baroness Nye's behalf. My Lords, I beg leave to ask this question in the name of my noble friend Baroness Nye on her behalf. I call the Minister, Lord Ahmed of Wimbledon. My Lords, promoting gender equality remains a priority for the Government, including breaking down barriers to girls fulfilling their right to 12 years of quality education. Our leadership on gender equality is even more vital as we work globally to build back better and more inclusively after COVID-19. This year, we are putting gender equality at the heart of our G7 presidency, co-leading the Gen Generation Equality Action Coalition on Gender-Based Violence, hosting the Global Partnership for Education, and also recognising the importance of gender to be effective in, fight, in the fight against climate change. Arnaz Crawley. I thank the noble law, the minister, for his answer. However, could he say, following the merger of DFID with the FCO, what responsibilities has the FCDO taken forward in standing up for women's sexual and reproductive rights globally? The noble law, the minister, will know that in such, in such countries as Nigeria and Brazil, having an abortion can carry a heavy jail sentence. And closer to home in Poland, Recent rulings mean much suffering for thousands of women. How is FCDO challenging such countries through diplomatic, economic and aid channels? My Lords, uh, when there were others on the world stage who challenged the notion um, of uh, the, the, the need for action on women's sexual and reproductive health, the United Kingdom has been proud to defend comprehensive sexual and reproductive health and rights, including at the UN Security Council, covering issues such as family planning. These are fundamental to empowerment and health of girls and women. For example, between 2019 and 2020 alone, UK Aid helped over 25 million women and girls use modern methods of contraception. My Lords, the Department for International Development had an impressive track record for promoting gender equality globally, thanks in part to its groundbreaking strategic vision for gender equality. Can my noble friend the Minister tell me uh, if the Foreign, Commonwealth and Development Office is committed to this strategic vision, and if not, how will it ensure that supporting women and girls is at the heart of what it does? My Lords, I can assure my noble friend that the FCDO has fully committed to retain and build on the strategic vision using all our diplomatic and development levers. The strategic vision continues to reflect and respond to the UK Government's ambitions on issues of gender equality, and this will not change. The challenges of advancing girls' education, sexual reproductive health, as well as women's political empowerment remain central to our planning. Lord Singh of Wimbledon. My Lords, a TUC report on the disproportionate hardship of childcare, homeschooling and often unsociable working hours endured by women in this country in the lockdown show that we're far to go in ensuring fairness to women here. Looking further afield, would the noble Lord the Minister agree that for real progress on equality, there is now an urgent need to place negative attitudes to women embedded in religious texts in the very different context of today's times. My Lords, I totally agree with the Noble Lord and those who seem, seek to marginalise women using uh, erroneous interpretations of religious texts or indeed other reasons are totally and utterly wrong and we should stand up against the exclusion of women anytime, anywhere. Unless Gail. Is the Minister aware that the Commission on the Status of Women's Conference will commence on the 15th of March with the theme of women's full participation and decision making in public life, the elimination of violence, achieving gender equality and empowering of women and girls? So can the Minister say what role is the government playing in this important global conference and how is the government working with the global community to achieve the Gender Equality Goal 5 of the Sustainable Development Goals. 
My Lords, we are fully engaged on the multilateral sphere, including on the conference that the noble lady has mentioned. And in specific terms, through our G7 presidency, we have three key pillars of educating girls, empowering women, and ending violence against women and girls, which will ensure also the focus of the G7 countries on this important agenda. One is north over. My Lords, there can scarcely be anything more important than ensuring that women and girls globally have access to family planning. The Noble Lord has said that the UK is, and I quote, a proud champion of this. Will he recognise that this will ring hollow if later he has to go beyond saying no decisions have been made on its budget to implementing swinging cuts, as in the aid to Yemen, as the government balances the books on the backs of the poor, as Mark Lowcock put it? My Lords, on, on the issue of the budget, we are genuinely at the moment going through a review, so um, I can't make any commitments, but, and it wouldn't be appropriate to do so. But as I've said already, this remains an impor important priority, and the legacy of our work in this uh, area is very clear. Lord Collins of Highbury. My Lords, malnutrition disproportionately affects girls, and as a result of COVID-19, rates of malnutrition around the world are currently soaring. Not only does this prevent girls reaching their full potential in school uh, and as adults, but it also can be fatal and often leads to childbirth complications. Can the noble lord, the minister, assure us that despite the aid cuts, he will continue to prioritise nutrition and will take urgent steps to address the global rise in malnutrition amongst women and girls? My Lords, I can assure the Noble Lord the issue of nutrition, as he's rightly articulated, is a view I very much share. Um, whilst we invest in empowerment, whilst we invest in education, it's important that all girls everywhere do receive the care they need, but also the food they need, to ensure they can lead productive lives for themselves and their countries. Barnes Hodgson of Avenger. My Lords, the COVID-19 pandemic is threatening to turn back the clock on gender equality globally. Nowhere is this worse than in conflict countries. Please can I ask my noble friend, the Minister, how we can ensure that more funds reach women at the grassroots trying to survive and raise their children in these shocking and dangerous situations? My Lords, again, I agree uh, with my noble friend. The COVID 19 pandemic has provided opportunity to those who wish to suppress girls' rights, women's rights, as a means to actually justify what they're doing. This is totally and utterly wrong, and UK development programming will continue to focus on important uh, priorities such as supporting women's meaningful participation, girls' education, and as I said earlier, I'm sure my noble friend will both acknowledge and welcome protecting girls and women from widespread gender based violence. Lord Lumba. Women's empowerment and gender equality requires strategic interventions at all levels of programming and policy making. These levels include reproductive health, economic empowerment, educational empowerment, and political empowerment. My Lords, unfortunately, the UK economy has been badly hit due to COVID-19 pandemic. Our foreign aid has been reduced accordingly. Therefore, would the noble lord, the minister, tell us if G7 countries should create a gender equality fund which can be used in the developing countries in South Asia, Africa, and South America to educate and empower women to support SDG Goal 5 and increase gender inequality globally. My Lords, I have noted the Noble Lord's suggestion, and we will put it to, of course, the Gender Equality Advisory Council, which will be headed through the G7 mechanism by my right on friend Liz Truss. Lord Hendy. Lords, can I ask the Noble Lord the Minister to consider, or is he already considering, as an important step towards equality between women and men, the United Kingdom following Uruguay, Namibia, Fiji and Argentina in ratifying Convention 190 adopted by the International Labour Organization on the 21st of June 
2019. The conventions directed against violence and harassment at work, in particular gender-based violence and harassment, and stresses the importance of a work culture based on mutual respect and dignity of the human being. My Lord, if I may, I will write to the Noble Lord in that respect. Lord Jones of Cheltenham. How does the government plan to use its time as president of the Convention on Cluster Munitions to promote the global disarmament agenda, thereby helping nations provide education for girls? My Lords, we have continued to champion the cause of education for girls, both in conflict zones and around the world, and that will continue to be a priority for FCDO. The Lord Bishop of Gloucester. I understand the government is investing over 67 million in the What Works to Prevent Violence programme, but what plans does the government have to follow Australia's lead in developing a national primary prevention framework to tackle the root causes of bias and discrimination against women and girls? My Lords, we have a range of programmes and projects covering the issue of discrimination at girl, of girls from an early age, including discrimination through their entry into education, their progress into employment, and of course, in conflict-related zones specifically, our initiatives such as the Preventing Sexual Violence in Conflict uh, initiative reflects the Government's priorities of this particular agenda. 